Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to Masjid al Rasul's 10 Nights of Muharram 2022 program. We started the program with Quran recitation. Next, we will invite Sayyid Mansur Ali Rizvi to present the Muharram lecture for tonight. Then we have Matam, a few announcements, and close with Ziyarat. Now, let us welcome Sayyid Mansur Ali Rizbi to present the Muharram lecture with a loud salivat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brothers and sisters in Iman, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I begin in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praise belongs to Him. When He creates, He does not create it. The one who sees, but it's unseen. The one who gives and takes life, but is ever living. And the one who gives the best example for us to follow, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Walladhina stajabu li rabbihim wa akhbakamu salaam. Wa'amruhum shurabaynahum. This verse of the Quran that I just recited is from the 42nd chapter, the 38th verse from Surah Shura, which means uh, consultation. And the translation is as follows And those who respond to their Lord keep up prayer, who consult among themselves, who give to the poor part of what we have given. Now, if I was to pose a question to you, if I was to ask you, what is something that the stingiest person loves to give freely and the neediest person hates to receive? What would that be? And the answer is advice. If you'll notice, people, many people love dispensing advice. And also at the same time, many people don't like following it. It's one of those interesting things. And sometimes you, you hear people from all strata of life. You, for example, you'll find people who are hypocritical who can sometimes dispense good advice. You can find, for example, people who will give the best of you see this in Surah Manafakun. It's a lucidus where people are talking. And what they say might be fine, but there is a lack of sincerity when you think about it. And so when we reflect on this Quranic verse, it stresses to us the importance of not only praying and giving charity, but also of consultation. Sure. It's right up there with these other two great acts that we have. Now, there's a common phenomenon in our community to do, for example, istikhara, akhira, as a type of consultation. Now, that requires its own separate discussion at a different time. But what I will say is this the consultation among those who are knowledgeable, sure is seen on a higher level than actually doing khirah and istikhara. So when you are pressed for a problem, when you're not sure what to do, it's best to seek sure and consultation among knowledgeable people, among well-meaning individuals, rather than just automatically say, okay, let me, let me turn the Quran, let me turn to this verse, and I'm gonna do this. Again, istikhara requires its own separate discussion, and at a later time, inshallah, time permitting, we may 
discuss this. Salaam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Imam Ali alayhi salam said that those who only care about their own opinion perish. But those who consult share in the intelligence of these individuals. We see, for example, the life of the prophet and imams. They used to consult their companions. There was a significant battle in the history of Islam known as Handak. And so during this battle, the Muslims were outnumbered. The Muslims were in danger of being invaded by the Quraysh and the Meccans. And so the Prophet decided to seek consultation and ask the companions and those around him what they thought. And so one of the companions, Salman of Farsi, said, back when I was in Persia, when we had a threat of an invading army, we used to dig a trench and it would help keep them out. And so the Prophet liked this idea. So then he instructed the Muslims to dig a trench to protect, help protect themselves from the invading army. And in fact, that wound up being an effective way of helping the Muslims at that time because it caught the Arabs off guard. Now, why should we get advice? It may seem self-explanatory, but it's important to think about this a little bit deeper. One of the reasons why it's important to seek out advice and consultation is that it protects us from harm and it minimizes our risk. For example, if I want to get into a business venture and I see somebody has had a lot of failures or a lot of success, I can learn from them as to what I can do, what pitfalls I should avoid. Or for example, I decide I want to make a journey, I want to travel somewhere. I'm taking a long drive. And maybe some parts of it are not safe. I can, for example, speak to those who have made that journey, who know that area, or are frequent drivers, all to help minimize my risk and to gain some knowledge. Another reason why somebody would seek consultation is to gain some benefit or profit. Bahlul, who was a companion of Imam Musul Khan and Imam Sadiq was somebody who pretended to be crazy. And the reason he pretended to be crazy was so that the rulers would not punish him. Because at that time, if they thought you were crazy, they would leave you alone. So one day, this in the story attributed to him, a man came up to Bahlul and said, Oh, Bahlul the wise, give me advice as to what investments in business I should invest in. And so Bahlul said very well. He said, well, this is the particular business that I advise you to invest in. So the man thanked him and he went on his way. A couple of days later, he comes back. He says, wow, I, that advice was so good. I made so much money. Now tell me crazy Bahlul, what next business should I get? So Bahlul said, okay, this is another investment that I suggest you give. The man took this advice and went. He came back a few days later and he was angry. He said, this last advice you gave me was horrible. I lost so much money. Why is it that you gave me such horrible advice this last time, but you gave me great advice the first time? Bahlul said, the first time, you addressed me as Bahlul the wise. And so I gave you wise advice. The second time you addressed me as Bahlul the madman and crazy. So I gave you crazy advice. And so one of the lessons that we take from this humorous anecdote is that not only is it important to seek advice, but also we should be very respectful. And of course, the, one of the last things, what benefits in, get, in seeking advice is that it makes us more well-rounded and we gain experience. But when we seek out a consultation, whether it's something related to our health or different areas, we become, even if it's not a financial gain, we become more knowledgeable, 
and we'll have gained more experience. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Now, how exactly should we go about getting it right? Now, in the next in the next several minutes, I'll be talking about different aspects of advice. And a lot of these bits and points come from from Imam Zayn al Abidin which is the treaties on rights. So if you ever get a chance, check out this treaties on rights and it talks about all different areas. So right now I'm going to talk about a little bit about some of the area that he addresses when it comes to advice. So number one, when seeking advice, ask with respect. Because you're taking from the person's time. You're seeking something that they have experience and knowledge. And so it's important that we seek advice. And also a person, many times when we approach people for advice, it makes them feel good as well. Because they see, they start feeling a certain significance starts entering their mind like, wow, people actually have an interest in what I have to say. So it's good in promoting the self-esteem of other individuals. A sobering statistic shows that many of the people who are incarcerated, who wound up committing crimes, if people had in their younger years, people had involved them in things. If people had valued their participation, their knowledge, etc., it's less likely they would have wanted to go into prison and committing crimes. And so this is something that we should pay attention to. The second thing is when somebody gives us advice, we may not always agree with what they have to say. And that's fine. The important thing is don't be disrespectful if somebody gives you this advice. So for example, if somebody tells you to go on a journey and after do, doing, doing your own due diligence, you're like, no, I don't think it was good advice. You still thank them for their time and their advice and you move on. Now the next question is from whom to get advice? We have traditions from Imam Sadiq Aysan which attribute to attributed to him, where it talks about the importance of individuals who have taqwa and have a have wisdom. So one of the things, one of the qualities of somebody whom we should be seeking advice from is somebody who is intelligent. The tradition of some imams that say, stay away from foolish people because they may intend to help you, but because of their foolishness, they wind up hurting you. The next important characteristic is that that person is knowledgeable in that particular area, or at least has some degree of experience. As an example, it could be somebody like a mechanic dealing with cars. It could be numerous things, but experience and knowledge are valuable tools when it comes to a type of person from whom we should seek advice. And last, but certainly not least, is that the person giving the advice is sincere. Because unfortunately, we may find people who want to, to certain individuals, they, for example, see a person as a threat, or they really don't like this person in their hearts. They may say some, they may pretend to give advice, but in reality, they hurt this person. So we should, we should exercise discernment when it comes to who exactly we're seeking advice from. And this leads me to the next point is who not to get advice. Not every Tom, Dick, and Harry is the person, type of person you want to get advice from, especially on very important issues. There's a story of a man, his son, and a donkey. And the man wanted to teach his son a lesson about how people can be very fickle. And so the man said to his son, son, I want you to sit on this donkey. I'm going to go through the sit. And I want you to observe how pe what people say and how they react. So they go through the first sit. And as, a pe as they're passing, people are saying, oh, what kind of a bad, inconsiderate son is sitting on his donkey, let not letting his father sit on his donkey? There are several people who make this, these kinds of claims. They're all saying bad things and criticizing his son. And finally, they leave that city. 
And so the father says, okay, I want you to get off and watch. I'm going to get on a donkey. I want you to observe the feet. So the father gets on a donkey. They go to the second city. And the people are saying, what kind of a horrible father is this? He's not letting his son sit on this donkey. So so many people are making all these accusations, saying horrible things about us. And finally, they get to the end of the city. And then he says, okay, son, I want you to sit on a donkey with me. So they go to the next set. The people start saying, how inconsiderate are these people that they're burdening the donkey so much with two people? A donkey can't handle both of them. And so many people are criticizing, probably on left and right, saying that how inconsiderate they are for being so humble to the donkey. And finally, the father says, we're both going to get off. And so they get to the next city, neither of them are sitting in donkey and they pass. Then people start saying, how stupid are the father and son that neither of them are sitting in donkey. And this donkey is just taking up space with nobody to have as a passenger. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Now how, if we, it may turn out that we're approached for advice. We may have an experience in something, we have knowledge about a particular thing, you know, from a friend wants to confide in us. What are some etiquettes to keep in mind when we ourselves are asked for advice? Number one, be sincere when you give the advice. Do whatever it is you would do if you were in their shoes. Imam Ali alayhi he used to advise those rulers those early rulers, even though, according to the school of Ahl al-Bayt, we believe some of those rulers did not give Imam Ali al-Islam his rights. But nevertheless, did not, this did not stop him from advising them when they sought out his counsel. Number two, be merciful and kind <coughs> when, seek, when dispensing advice. Sometimes we may want to lay it out on somebody, be like, come off as condescending, harsh, judgmental. And here is somebody coming to us for advice and they feel vulnerable and you know, we kind of let them out of it, saying, oh, you were stupid, why did you so and so? And so we have to show a certain degree of mercy when somebody comes to us for advice. And last, but certainly not least, if you don't know something when, when somebody asks you about a matter, don't be afraid to say you don't know and instead refer them to somebody who might know. Imam Ali said there's no shame in saying you don't know when somebody asks you a question about which you do not have knowledge of. Now, what are some things that we should get advice? One thing, for example, are religious and spiritual. I'm not talking about, for example, you know, Obviously, we're not going to ask somebody, hey, should I pray my daily prayers or not? But this is a logic act. So not exactly ask somebody you know, whether it's something, whether it's mandatory is something we should do or not do. But there are other areas in our spiritual religious affairs where it seeks to benefit us if we see consultation. In our area of financial health, when it comes to investments, it comes to business, it comes to work, it's very beneficial for us to seek out advice from those who have experience in this. Nutrition, when it comes to our health, people who are athletes, doctors, personal trainers, these individuals who have knowledge of the human body and what helps maintain a certain level of health, these are, these are the types of individuals that we should seek out assistance. And lastly, as I conclude with respect to issue of advice, be very careful about giving unsolicited advice or unwanted advice. Because for example, sometimes, and this is unfortunately, when people misinterpret Amr bin Ma'aruf and he al Munkar as license to just dispense things without, for example, knowing the person, the person's situation, and just kind of being the halal, uh, police, a harm SWAT team on individuals without understanding the person's particular circumstances, and we do end up doing more harm than good. 
So we have to use wisdom and we have to discern proper judgment as to when to give advice and who to give it to. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So tonight, as we are remembering the Yam of Abba Abdul Hussein, the sacrifice he made, the sacrifice to his friends and his family, tonight remember his nephew, Al Qasim. Al Qasim was, was a youth. We had talked about Al Muhammad being young yesterday, Al Qasim was also very young. We have a narration that comes to us from somebody who was on the, in the army fighting on the side of Omar bin Saad against the army of Imam Hussein. And he describes when he sees Bil Qasim, he says, a young lad who came out against us. His face was like the split of the new moon. And he carried a sword. He was wearing a shirt and a waistcloth in a pair of sandals, one of whose straps was broken. And I will not forget that it was a strap of a left foot. So this person seeing this young child and thinking to himself, wow, a kid is coming up. And then he talks about how he sees another soldier saying, I'm gonna go attack this person. And this person who's already an army where he should be, is thinking to himself, well, this is, this is, this is too much. He says to him, why? Why are you attacking this boy? There are already enough people around him who will probably attack him. He said, no, I'm going to attack him. So this coward went and he attacked Al Qasim, who fought a battle with him. Al Qasim was injured and he fell. And it is said that he cried out, Ya Ammar of my oh, uncle, Imam Hussein Aisalam came charging. And it is said that the horses of the enemies, while trampling on the person inadvertently against the person who attacked Qasim, also struck poor Qasim and broke his body. Imam Hussein was heartbroken. Imam Hussein was forced to pick up the body of Al Qasim and bring it back with him. And bring it back so that others could see what, how they've treated such a young boy. Imam Hussein saying, away with the people who have killed you. The people against whom your grandfather will complain on the day of judgment on your behalf. By Allah, it is hard on your uncle that you called him, but he could not answer you. Or he answered, but he could not help you. By Allah, it was a cry whose avengers were many, but whose helpers are few. Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raja'un. Assalamu ala al-Hussein wa ala awlaad al-Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al-Hussein wa ala awlaad al-Hussein wa ala ashab al-Hussein. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Sayyid Mansour, for your inspiring Muhammadan lecture for tonight. Now, let us welcome Brother Abdul Rahim to recite a noha in Matam during these 10 nights of Muharram program with a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أعظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصابنا بالحسين عليه السلام 
May Allah increase our and your rewards for mourning the tragedy of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Oh Imam al Hussein, oh Imam al Hussein, oh Imam al Hussein, oh Imam al Hussein, oh Imam al Hussein. Oh, Imam al Hussein. Oh, Imam al Hussein. Oh, Imam al Hussein. Walking up to your shrine, racing back into time. No, I'm not deaf nor blind. No, I will not rewind. Sailing against the tide with Zainab by your side. Walking up to the one who has walked through this land and I'm kissing your sand. Standing in front of the one who stood all alone with Asghar in your hand. Oh, Imam al Hussein. Oh 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 Imam al Hussein. Walking with teary eyes, you have raised me and my head high. You raised me as a child and never left my side. And if I am in doubt, your light pierces the clouds. Your light pierces me like you were pierced through your heart. Where Zainab kissed your chest And she turned to Medina and well Ya Zahra, I fulfilled your request Oh Imam al Hussein 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 Allah Allah Muhammad Thank you brother Abdul Rahim for reciting this heartfelt Noah and leading us in Matam or Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. I would like to also thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank all of you for your blessed participation in this year's Masjid El Rasul's Houston Muharram program. I pray that during these 10 special nights, we continue to learn new lessons from the events of Kabbalah, and it will help us to enhance our spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very briefly, before we close with Ziyarat, I would like to invite all of you to our weekly programs. On Thursday, we have a weekly dual Camille in English via Zoom at 9 p.m. Central Time. We also provide brothers the opportunity to sign up to recite dual Camille in English. Look for that sign up sheet on Thursdays provided as a link in the Zoom chat. 
On Fridays, we performed the Juma prayer at Masjid El Rasul in the Fifth Ward, Houston, Texas at 1.30 p.m. led by Sayyid Mansour Ali Rizvi. We also have our monthly share meal program where we share a cooked meal with the local community, members of the Fifth Ward. We would also like to invite you to our monthly cemetery program at Paradise Cemetery where we pray for the deceased Mukminin, sweep the graves and apply incense and zam zam water for the graves. The sisters also have a weekly spiritual group program on Sundays. We will also have periodic celebrations and commemoration programs at Masjid El Rasul, Fifth Ward, Houston, Texas, which we will announce via email as these programs are planned. Our next program at Masjid El Rasul is scheduled for August 27th, a monthly family dinner circle where we discuss various topics as a community. Finally, we ask all our brothers and sisters to support the Masjid El Rasul Muharram 22 program on Zoom by donating as little as $20 or more to help us maintain the Masjid and our programs. Please click on the corresponding night and choose from the amounts listed. We also have been blessed with the authorization from Ayatollah Sistani to receive kums from the Mukminin. We are authorized to utilize half of the Sam Imam kums for Masjid El Rasul, Fifth Ward, Houston, Texas. I will leave the sponsor a Muharram Night PayPal link and kums donation link in the chat and give you a couple of minutes to utilize the link. Assalamu alayka, ya ba'abdillah. Assalamu alayka, ya Hussain. Ya I saw angels falling for you And their wings laid before you Where they walk to your final rest, Ya Hussein In the city that is yours now Where they whisper and they call out So they mourn until they find life, Ya Hussein Ya Hussein I remain here without walking, Ya Hussein. In the footsteps of the orphans, Ya Hussein. And my soul is in darkness, Ya Hussein, oh Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, oh Ya Hussein. Ya Pisare Heather e Kalar, to me Rasi Ado Salda, or me who Tera Bandaya Hussein. Many seized the Memola, or you could have been a hitcha, is good Jo Milgaya Tera Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, Mere Dil me Heye Hussein. Ya Hussain, kar lo main teri ziyarat. Ya Hussain, kash ar ma ho ye pura. Ya Hussain. Let us now clothe with ziyarat.
السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك منا سلام الله أبدا ما بقينا وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد منا لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا محمد بن عبد الله ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا أمير المؤمنين يا علي بن أبي طالب ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله يا فاطمة الزهراء ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا حسن بن علي المجتبى ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله الحسين السلام على التسعة الأئمة من ذريتك السلام عليك يا مولاي يا حجة ابن الحسن المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Again, thank you so much for joining us in the Masjid Rasul's 10 Nights of Muharram 2022 program. And we pray these auspicious nights help us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This now ends the program for tonight. And let me remind you that we will be here, inshallah, every night for 10 consecutive nights at 9 Central Time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.